وهو الذي جعلكم خلائف الأرض ورفع بعضكم فوق بعض درجات ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم إن ربك سريع العقاب وإنه لغفور رحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين I begin in the name of Allah the most beneficent, the most merciful all praise and adorations belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our topic of discussion today is communion with Allah that is relationship with Allah what does it mean to commune with Allah when we say communion commune with Allah it means to focus on Allah converse, talk often with profound intensity intimate communication or rapport as sharing your heart and mind with Allah in prayer to communicate with Allah is like being in solitude with Allah remembering his attitude attributes as well as his powers on us when we are communicating with Allah it means we are appreciating his love his blessings and mercies on us also when we are communicating with Allah it's like having a joint participation in between us and Allah that is we want to talk to Allah we want we want we want to be in solitude with Allah we want to direct all our requests to Allah and to do that it has to, to be with full concentration of our mind also apart from full concentration it has to be with a pure heart so we have to purify our soul to be able to communicate well with Almighty Allah. When we are communicating with Allah, it also means that we are telling Allah all our needs, all our requests, all the things that we want Him to do to us. We are directing all our fears to Him with love. So when we want to communicate with Allah, it has to be with love and with sincerity of mind. When we are also communicating with Allah, it means that we want to tell Allah that He is the only one that can do everything for us. So to, com- to, ha- to be in communion with Allah means that we want to be in the presence of Allah, in His presence. We want to do things with, excluding every other person between us and Allah alone. And that is what is expected of us in this special month of Ramadan. To have time to communicate with Allah to talk to Allah directly, to, to, to tell him all what we want him to do for us. And when we want to do this, this communication, as I've said earlier, it must be, the first thing is a pure heart. We must purify our soul. We must believe that he is the only one that deserves our honor. He is the only one that can do everything for us. All his attributes, we must know that he is the one that can do everything. He is omnipresent, he is omnipotent, he is the beneficent, he is the merciful. He is everything in our life. So our mind must be there that I want to talk to my creator. I want to talk to somebody that created me, that knows me, even before he created me. And I want to put my request towards him. So when we want to communicate with Allah, we must, first of all, also lower our wings of humility. In humility. We communicate Allah in humility. We must humble ourselves before Allah. Because Allah has said that those that humble themselves in prayer, in Surah to Muminun, Quran 23, you will see the higher there. That those that humble themselves in prayer. So we humble ourselves to Allah when we want to communicate with Him. Also, when we, when we are communicating with Allah, we assume that Allah, because He is our Creator, loves us and knows what we want. So we communicate with him in g- gently, not by shouting or not by abusing or not by doing things that Allah does not want. In Islam, when we want to communicate with Allah, we sit in humility. We pray to him, we glorify his name, we seek his forgiveness, and we put our request towards him. With the belief that he is the only one that can answer our prayers, and he will surely answer our prayers. 
So when we want to communicate, we must communicate with Allah in humility and in an humble manner. We can, we can cry while we are supplicating. There is no harm in that. But we must not be shouting up to the extent of disturbing the peace of our neighbors while we are communicating with Allah. No. Allah hears. He said this as Samir al Basil. He hears and he hears everything that we want to see and he sees everything even before we say it. So he knows what we want to request for. So ours is just to request for it and he will surely do it for us. Then also when we want to communicate with Allah, we must try as much as possible to have good relationship with people, with Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Because a person that wants Allah to answer his prayers, you must have good relationship with your fellow human beings. Be it Muslims or non-Muslims, you must do good to them. We are Muslims. We are, the, we are people that forbid evil and enjoy what is good. As Allah has said in Surah 2, Al Imran, verse 110. So we must enjoy, good, uh, enjoy goodness and forbid evil. So our relationship with people must be good. That we must be good to people, be it Muslims and non-Muslims. Also, when we want to communicate with Allah, we want Allah to answer our prayers. We must engage in good deeds. Our supplication must be to Allah. We must engage in more of nawafil. We must engage in more of recitation of the Holy Quran. We must engage in giving charity to the poor. All these are the things that will enhance our dua to Allah. When we are good, your, your, your relationship to people is good. When you engage in more nawafil, uh, voluntary acts like pray, uh, praying our field before every solat, all those, they are things that will elevate our status in the sight of Allah. And also, when we engage in charity, giving to the poor, even if it is little, give out of what you have, it will also enhance our relationship with Allah. ما كان لبشر أن يؤتيه الله الكتاب والحكم والنبوة ثم يقول للناس كونوا عبادا لي من دون الله ولكن كونوا ربانيين بما كنتم تعلمون الكتاب وبما كنتم تدرسون Zakat and Sadako Foundation for the board and the management of Zakat and Sadako Foundation, you are hereby being presented with this washing machine to support your business. I congratulate you. Good day. Can we miss you? What's the name? My name is Emmanuel somewhere. Where do you reside? I stay in Nogu State. Uh, this is Zakat and Sadako Foundation. How did you get to know about the foundation? Uh, one of my mom knows about the foundation, so he said I should write everything that I want that the foundation will help me to acquire the all the washing machine and things that I wrote that the foundation will help me to get it. Okay, when you were told that initially, did it occur to you that it's possible than being a non-Muslim? And in this life. Everything is possible if you have somebody that you trust very well. The woman is my mom, so I trust her that anything that she puts his hand, the thing will work. So that is why I know that the thing will work. for Zaka to cure our greed. When we give our money to those in need. Size for Salamun Alaikum. Peace be with you. Alaikum Salam. Shies for Shams, the shining sun, which Allah placed for everyone. And sighs for Salah, for when we pray, facing Him, every day facing Him, till we meet our Lord. Allah, there's only one God, and Muhammad is His messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Dies for Duha, the morning light, the sun has turned from red to white. Dies for Tariq, a path to walk. And also, 
when we engage in reading the word of Allah, the Quran, it will also uh, improve our relationship with Allah. Now, when we now want to communicate with Allah, what are the things that we should do when we want to communicate with Allah? What are the things that is expected of us? First of all, we must talk to Allah. Don't talk to any other person. Talk to Allah alone. He's the only one that can do everything that you want for you. Talk to Allah. Tell him all what you want. Tell him all your needs. He's the one that can provide for, for you. So talk to him. Don't talk to anybody. Don't tell anybody. Nobody can do... Nobody can alleviate uh, alleviate our problems for us except Allah. So we talk to Him, and that is why when we are saying we should be in communion with Allah, be in solitude with Allah and tell Him what you want. Number two, obey His commands. When you are talking to Allah, you want Allah to answer your prayer. You must obey Allah's commandments. Allah has commanded us that we should pray regularly. Allah has commanded us to do good and forbid evil. These are Allah's command on us. And Allah has commanded that he has not created us to do another thing except to come and worship him on the surface of the earth. So we must obey Allah and we must obey his commandments. Also, part of it that we need to do is we must also listen to Allah's words. Allah has given us a lot of instruction in his books. Let us listen to him, listen to his words, obey his commandments. When you listen to him and you let Allah to talk to you, you know, as in when you are reading the Quran, let Allah speak. Receive it as if Allah is speaking to you directly, that Allah is talking to you personally and act on it sincerely. So when you do all this, you will see that your relationship with Allah will be very, very good. You will be as if you are seeing Allah. That is the essence of the communication. So when you try to listen to Allah, when you read Allah's words, ponder upon its meaning. When you try to ponder upon it, you will see that Allah will illuminate your heart to the understanding of what he is saying in the Quran. So, when we listen to him, we would um, understand his message better. Part of it is also that we should show gratitude to Allah. It's when we are talking to Allah, it is not all the time we give requests, request, request, but we should show gratitude to him over all what he has done in our lives. When you try to reason and you ponder, you will see that Allah has been so merciful, so grateful to us, to the extent that there is nothing, there is no power within us that can put, uh, that can make us to be at the level that we have now. It is Allah. So let us show gratitude to Him. Don't always let us look at what He has not done. Look at those things that He has done. Even in your own eyes, it might be little. Waking up every morning is not by your power. Being able to carry all the organs of your body is not by your power. Going out and coming back is not by your power. Having something to eat is not by your power. So, so, so because of all these things, let us show gratitude to Allah. In her words, in our communication with Allah, one of the words that Prophet Sallallahu encouraged us to be saying most is, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Or Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah, al -Azim. Let all these uh, supplications be more in when we are communicating with Allah. And Allah has said that if you are grateful to me, you will surely receive more. So when we show gratitude to Allah in our communication, Allah will surely bless us more in manifold. Also, the other thing is, let us seek forgiveness of our sin. Whenever you are communicating with Allah and you are seeking his pleasure, don't forget to seek for his forgiveness. Seek for his forgiveness from all our shortcomings. We know we hear it from time to time. So when you sit and you want to talk to Allah, don't forget to seek for his forgiveness. Then the other one is be mindful of Allah. First Allah has said in an hadith that be mindful of Allah. That when you are mindful of Allah, that is you must not cross the boundary of Allah. You know what Allah wants. You know what Allah does not want. The Allah are clear and the Aram are also clear. Move away from the Aram. Move closer to the Allah. For every time you move closer to the Allah, you are hearing Allah's reward. So, we try as much as to be mindful of Allah's uh, things. Let us mind what we do. Mind what you, the way you earn your living. Be very mindful of it. Be mindful of your interaction. Be mindful of what you do. 
Be mindful of everything that concerns you. These are the things that will make our communication with Allah to be very smooth. And it will make our heart to be at peace when we are communicating with Him. So we try as much as possible to know that it is only Allah that we need to supplicate to. So when we are in solitude with Allah, don't let us forget to be very, very grateful to Him, to seek His forgiveness, and to, my, to purify our hearts. Purify your mind of all impurities. Be good to your neighbors. Don't, don't have, have any rancor or any envy or hatred or anything in your heart. When you still have all those, it can blow your relationship with Allah. So I pray to Almighty Allah, one and what Allah, that as you are in this special month of Ramadan, may Allah accept all our supplications as we are communicating with Him day and night. May Allah bless us. May Allah grant us all our heart's desires and forgive us all our shortcomings. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. دا is for Deen, Al Islam, religion with Allah since time began. دا is for Dik, remembering Allah and Ra is for the month of Ramadan. Oh Ramadan. دا is for Zakah to cure our greed when we give our money to those in need. Sa is for salamun alaykum, peace be with you wa alaykum as